In this video, I'm going to show you how you can speed up your report development process in Power BI using DAX Studio. I'm going to show you how to install it and how to quickly get started. And also, I want to show you the typical activities that you can do in DAX Studio. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So first, what is DAX Studio? DAX Studio is a third-party tool that allows you to work with DAX queries with a lot more fine-tuning and detail compared to what you normally could get in just using it in Power BI. So now you're thinking to yourself, well, I could just use the formula bar in Power BI in order to write DAX queries. And what you can, it has several limitations and DAX Studio allows you to work with DAX queries a lot more efficient with a lot more control over the DAX code and calculations that you do, such as performance tuning or uh, you're formatting your queries. To get started, you need to install DAX Studio first because it's a third-party tool. Uh, you need to go to daxstudio.org uh, to download the installer. The latest version will always be uh, at the front page. I believe it's open source, so it's completely free for you to use the tool. However, obviously, if this tool have helped you, you should consider supporting the project to keep this open source. So you'll be able to um, sponsor or help financially and the links down below. Once you download the installer, you just have to install it in your computer and it's pretty standard from there. Just follow the instructions. Uh, I've already installed mine, so I don't have to do this anymore. But uh, when you first launch DAX Studio, it will look something like this. So first, it will ask for what the data source it should connect to. So it's looking for a data model that it can try to explore. And you'll see here you have a couple different options when connecting to uh, different data sources, like connecting to a Power Pivot model in Excel, uh, Power BI model, which is at the moment we have uh, one here selected. Um, and it shows up here, by the way, because we have it opened here um, in Power BI Desktop. Otherwise, this will be empty. And then you can also connect to a tabular server um, if that is uh, where your DAX queries are. And actually, what we're going to do is we're going to close this and we're going to go back to this Power BI report that I've created here, which is just a very simple headcount analytics report. And um, the reason why is because there is an external tools ribbon here. Once you install DAX Studio, you should be able to find the DAX Studio extension here uh, as a selectable op option. So once you click on the external tools, it gives you DAX Studio, the third party tool available for you to click from Power BI Desktop. So the benefit of this is that you don't have to connect to the data model. You don't have to do it manually. Uh, when you open DAX Studio, it automatically uh, references the reports that you have open. So anyway, back to the report here, we have a headcount analytics reports created to get insights about a company's basic headcount, starters, levers, things like this. In order to make these calculations, I created a bunch of measures in my calculations table down here. So you'll see we have a bunch of measures here, but for example, if you look at the header, uh, the head count, uh, here is a, a DAX measure that I've created to calculate the head count based on the data that we have. So now that you have a bit of an idea of what the report is and how it sort of looks like, let's have a look at um, how this looks like in DAX Studio. So we're going to go to external tools and we're going to click DAX Studio. This will open up uh, the same view that we had before, but obviously it doesn't give us the option anymore to connect to a different source because it's already recognized that we are want to look at the headcount analytics model in Power BI Desktop. So you'll see on the left hand side here, uh, this will correspond to the different tables or queries that uh, we had in our reports. So you'll see here we have age groups, calculations, calendar, employees and length of service groups, which is exactly the same 
as the fields that we have here on the right hand side. So now let's go back to DAC Studio and let's have a look at some of its basic usage. So typically you use DAC Studio to quickly get results as opposed to doing it manually in Power BI desktop. So you write your query here on uh, uh, in the middle of the screen, you hit run on the top left here, and then you'll see the results on the output section at the bottom down here. So for example, we want to see data in our employees table. Uh, so first you simply just type evaluate first. Uh, all queries need to start with this evaluate. Um, in the next, uh, we're just going to type employees. Simple as that. Now that we've done that, we're just gonna hit run. And you'll see at the bottom here, it's giving us some values or it gives us the whole table of employees. So the data that we have in that table uh, in this output. And you'll notice that it uh, will correspond to obviously the data that we have in that table. So as you notice when we typed evaluate and then we put the employees, uh, the output is a table and DAC Studio needs the results to be in tabular format. So if you want to run a query, let's say with a single or scalar value, uh, and it's not a table, uh, for example, um, you want to wrap your um, expression with the curly brackets. So for example, you want to do a count of employee IDs in, uh, in, in your employees table. Now, you know that the syntax for it is count, and we know that we want to count the uh, employees employee ID. So here we go. And if you hit run here, you will get an error, and you will see here, this is why. So count is not a tabular uh, um, function. So you'll notice that count returns a value, not a table of values. And that's what I mean by scalar values. So for this to work, we need to wrap it with a curly brackets here to make this value uh, into a tabular return. So you'll see it counts the employee ID and our result gives us a thousand. So now that we've covered the absolute basics of what you can do in DAX Studio, Let's now have a look at some of the typical activities that you could use it for. Now, first is you can use DAX Studio to format your DAX queries. Now, it's really important to format your queries to make it readable, not just for you, but for other people working with your code. Obviously, you can freehand this um, in your formula bar in Power BI Desktop, um, but uh, you can define it here in uh, DAX Studio. You can do it automatically with a click of a button. So we're gonna go to uh, use an example. So we're gonna just delete this one first of all. We're gonna go to calculations and we're gonna go back to our headcount um, DAX measure. We're gonna right click on it and we're gonna hit define measure. So this will just pre-fill what is already written in our measure. Uh, in, in our model. So the only difference is that obviously it's uh, in DAX Studio, so there needs to be a define and a measure for it. Now, everything else in this is actually written by hand. So I wrote that, so I added all the indentations uh, and its format to make the measure a little bit readable. But let's say you're working with a measure or a code that is not formatted. You'll see there's a button here called Format Query that applies uh, formatting for queries that are highlighted. So to do that, it's pretty simple. So already we have uh, we have sort of did the formatting here already. But if you click DAX Formatter here, so you'll see it creates or it follows a standard of formatting the DAX query, making it a lot more readable. Uh, instead of either freehanding it or not doing it at all. The next thing that you can do in DAX Studio is you can look for dependencies to your measures and columns. So this function is more for housekeeping. Uh, let's say you have a column uh, and you want to remove them. You wanna make sure that if you delete them, you won't affect 
any other measures or columns uh, or calculations in your model. Now to do that, all you have to do is right click on the object. So we'll use headcount as a demo here again. Uh, let's say we're planning to delete this measure, but we wanna make sure that if we delete it, it won't have any dependencies and it won't break our model. Um, so we're gonna right click on this measure for now. You're gonna go show objects that reference measure. So you'll see at the bottom here, it will list out all the objects that are dependent on the headcount. So you'll see we have a list of measures here um, that is dependent on this base headcount measure. So it references them in its calculation. You'll see that the table, uh, it exists in the calculations table. So it's all here in this calculations measure table that we've created. It tells you the object name, uh, what, it's what it's referencing and what type of object is it. So let's have a look at this example just to check that we definitely are referencing headcount in one of these. So let's have a look at turnover. So if we try to look for turnover here. So here we have a bunch of turnover calculations, but we're just looking for turnover just by itself. So it's, we're going to right click turnover here and click define measure. When you click it, it will show you, uh, here we go. So you'll see that it definitely references headcount um, because it does, or how it calculates turnover is it divides levers, uh, which is another measure against the headcount. So if we delete the headcount measure, it will affect the turnover measure as well. DAX Studio also allows you to export data quite easily. So if you need to quickly do that in Power BI, for example, you want to export the employees from Power BI, all you have to do is go here to uh, the table view. Uh, let's say we want to export the employees. You right click on it and you click copy table and then paste it in Excel or wherever you want to copy it into. However, if you have a big table or a big query, this might pose a challenge. So DAX Studio allows you to do the exact same operation, but a lot easier. So let's start by going to advanced here. And let's say we want to export data. Uh, let's say here we want to export it in a CSV. Let's say we want to just export it in my desktop. So not a problem. And here you see it allows you to export the tables uh, by themselves. So we just click employees and then that's it. So you see, you don't have to copy it in the clipboard, open Excel, paste it, save it. It's already done for us. So I'm just gonna open it quickly just to show you. So here is the file that DAX Studio exported. It would be the same as if we just copied and pasted it in an Excel file, except that uh, all we had to do was follow a couple of steps and export it from DAX Studio. You can also use DAX Studio for performance tuning. So let's say you want to optimize your DAX queries. DAX Studio exposes execution times and some details uh, on your measures and calculations that you typically won't see in Power BI Desktop. So let's go back here. I'm just gonna delete everything here and I'm gonna go back to our uh, headcount measure over here. We're going to evaluate it. And you see that the evaluate, um, we wrap it with our curly brackets and it returns as a value. Now we want to expose uh, how efficient uh, this execution times are for uh, calculating this, uh, this measure. So we're gonna go to uh, all queries. So we're gonna click all queries. And then we're going to click uh, run query. So let's try that again because I think you don't see the query plan and server timings unless you have to explicitly uh, click them. So you'll see they're selected down here and you'll see the tabs open up on the bottom uh, section of DAX Studio. So if we hit run again, so now we have the output, the results as we expect, and we will get some information here about the execution time 
of this measure. So you'll see how long it took for the formula engine to run the query and for how long the storage engine took to run and evaluate the query. And that's really it. So those were the common tasks that you can do in DAX Studio. I'm guilty of not using DAX Studio so much um, and a lot of its features, I only use some of them. So if you want to learn more about DAX Studio and you'd like me to cover more of this kind of stuff, let me know in the comment section box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.